Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to assess restorability of the tooth and some of the protocol I use uh, when I'm restoring heavily uh, filled tooth. Assessing restorability is a key skill you need to develop as a general dental practitioner or if you're doing full mouth reconstruction cases. Because we see cases such as these day in, day out. It's very easy to assess these cases because you know that the calyx is so subgingival that these teeth needs to come out. However, when you assess these type of teeth and when you're looking at the teeth where they have cracks, so number six, uh, first molar is easy to treat, relatively easy, whereas number seven is a bit more trickier because this tooth has got mesial and distal crack line, it's got amalgam. We know that the amalgams are associated with cracks in the teeth and now we need to discuss with patient what are we going to do about it are you going to leave it as it is and do nothing and monitor the tooth are you going to remove amalgam and just do composite restoration are you going to remove the amalgam do the core and do an only on that tooth or are you going to crown that tooth to get the proper bracing effect in my opinion i would usually uh, because there is a crack mesial and distal i prefer to do onlay if the tooth is asymptomatic and I've done this hundreds of times and it works really well if the tooth is symptomatic then I tend to cram the tooth because that means there is a higher risk that the tooth can fracture um, and I don't want to take chances and that's why I use uh, I cram the tooth um, usually if the tooth is symptomatic I would crown the tooth and keep the patient in a provisional crown for a couple of months to make sure that the tooth is symptomless there is no symptom, patient's fine, because if the tooth needs a root canal treatment, then it's better to do it while patient's in the provisionalization stage rather than when you finish the treatment. So I would keep the patient into temporary, uh, make a nice provisional crown, cement it and leave it uh, and monitor it because it will still do the job of protecting tooth. But at the same time, if that needs a root, root canal treatment, that means that you're now going through your new crown. If patients comes with this type of uh, restoration, which is quite huge, um, you need to be able to discuss with patient that, you know, you won't know until you remove all the restoration, remove all the caries, whether A, you can save the tooth, B, what type of restorations you're going to choose, and C, whether they're going to need a root canal treatment in this tooth or not, because the, the, the existing restorations are very deep. So you need to have a frank discussion with patient that you know until as you do investigation you will no, never know and this is something i tell patients such as look i'm doing a survey of your house so if you're buying a house before you buy a house we need to do a survey so when we do the survey we're assessing every single thing and only then we both know what situation we are in so we need to do the survey of the tooth before we really decide what the treatment is going to be but most of the time, with my experience, I can say that, yes, I will be able to save the tooth by doing an onlay, a buildup and an onlay. And yeah, maybe you may need a root canal treatment. However, if I've done my due diligence, uh, then we know what are the chances of patients needing that. So whenever I am um, treating this type of heavily filled teeth, um, I make sure that I do take radiograph, periapical radiograph to check there is no uh, periapical lesion. I make sure that I've done cold test, hot test and lactic pulp test to make sure that, you know, it's positive. Um, I would check with a tooth sleuth to check if there is any pain in the cusps um, or if there is any cracked tooth syndrome. Of course, if patients got cracked tooth syndrome, then avoid using tooth sleuth or if you, if you are, just ask patient to close gently because sometimes if patient closes really hard, they can fracture the tooth and then obviously you're going to remove the remove the restoration and assess the tooth as we discussed in photography uh, lecture that you know you are going to uh, take the photographs and explain to patient what situation the tooth is in as i said onlays are much more conservative than crowns so you know unless really patients are symptomatic um, i would prefer onlay and uh, consider deep margin elevation if you feel that the margins are deep and you can't get isolation properly. And again, if patient comes, you know, with a heavily filled tooth, you can save the tooth by doing an onlay. It's just about communicating with patient and making sure patients are on the same page. 
So I hope you found this video useful. We used to have protocols in the sense that we used to have like if you have a two millimeter width of the width of the buckle wall, then you can keep the buckle wall. If you have one millimeter width of the lingual wall, you need to take it out. Um, or if you have height of the wall, a certain amount, then you need patient needs a post and core. However, adhesive technology and adhesive techniques have thrown all those criteria outside the window. You can really uh, and put an only on a flat surface. So I would not go very aggressive. I would trust in your adhesive technique. And if you are not getting results with your adhesive technique, then usually it's the it's your fault. It's your, the technique's fault. Uh, it's the way you're using it. It's not the that the treatment doesn't work because in my hands it's, it works really amazingly. And I know many dentists who are doing a similar type of treatment and it works really well. So I hope again this was useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.